ETA, ETA together. It's uh, August 31st, 12.30 p.m. Welcome, everyone. We've got an agenda full of items today. I do want to uh, introduce Dan Lynch, our newest representative from Albany County, first uh, CDTA board meeting, in person anyway. Yes, thank you. Good to see you. Welcome aboard. Great to be here. Um, we're going to start with the um, approval of the minutes. We'll team these up together. Two meetings, one on June 29th and the special meeting that we had last week on August 25th. Can I get a motion to approve those minutes? Second. Second. Second, thank you, Mike. Uh, if there's any comments, additions, subtractions, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? It's approved. Uh, we'll move on to uh, committee reports. Uh, the Board Operations Committee uh, hasn't met all summer. Our next meeting is scheduled for September 14th, the Wednesday, 9.15 a.m., so we'll move right on to the performance monitoring audit committee. Denise Figueroa. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the committee met last week, um, August 25th at 11.30 a.m. here at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Um, we have four consent agenda items today. The first is approval of the contract for purchase of batteries. Our contract with bus batteries is about to expire, and a new contract is required. An invitation for bid was issued for the purchase of two types of batteries. Three bids were received, and staff recommends a two-year contract to the low bidder, which is our incumbent, Napa Auto Parts. We need a motion to award a two-year contract to Napa Auto Parts of Latham for $229,000. we get a motion on this? So moved. Second. Second, please. Any discussion? I was talking about a committee the other day. Need batteries, right? Something's planned always. always. Yeah. And, um, just in reviewing the bids, it looked like uh, obviously they were the lowest bidder for yeah. incumbent and that their pricing for first and second year is the same yeah. compared yeah. to the others that were like 5 to 12 percent increases. So. Yes, very good. Yeah. yeah. The power That's off the, the power of the incumbents. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Great. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolutions approved. Okay, our next item is approval of the contract for traffic signal priority equipment. Uh, traffic signal priority, uh, which is TSP, provides special treatment uh, to transit vehicles to move through signalized intersections faster than automobile traffic. A contract is required for new TSP equipment on the BRT purple line and for upgrades on the BRT blue line. Uh, the upgraded system allows uh, for better monitoring, reporting, and analytics. A sole source contract is required due to the pri proprietary nature of the technology. We already have the base system in place. Uh, need, we need a motion to approve a three-year contract with two linear renewals to global traffic technologies in St. Paul, Minnesota for an amount not to exceed $733,297. Can I get a motion on this? So moved. Thank you, Jack. Do you have a second? Second. second. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Any uh, comments, questions, technology in action here? I have two questions. How, how is this funded and was it um, expected? Yes, uh, yes, yes. Look, I was going to offer here uh, a little explanation. Uh, I was Chris Desi give you a little bit of an explanation. If we're in a new world, like proprietary software, we do this now, it seems to me, like every single month. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, the state procurement laws really haven't caught up to this. They will eventually. But until they do, you're going to have these really kind of odd looking procurements. But Chris can answer those two questions and also talk a little bit about what this is, and maybe Chris tease them into the next item, because it's the same thing. Sure. Well, to start by answering your questions, it's the River BRT um, grant and the okay. Washington Western BRT grant, so two grant-funded um, uh, funding sources for this. Uh, that's the first one. And the second one is yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'll start there. Um, for the folks that weren't part of the conversation the other day, uh, just real quick, TSP is the technology by which buses communicate with intersections, and the smarts on the bus determines, hey, am I early, am I late, am I loaded, am I unloaded, that type of thing. And basically uses uh, the software to determine if it's going to request uh, 
communication with the, with the signal at the intersection to either uh, prolong the green light so the bus can go through or um, shorten up the red light so of course the bus can go through a little bit quicker. All this is coordinated with the city and any other stakeholders, the traffic management engineers, and technicians. Uh, we don't preempt over emergency vehicles and things like that. Uh, but essentially, it allows for uh, to buses to officially get from point A to point B uh, more effectively on the BRT. Um, this is related to the next item, the teaser to the next item, as Carmen mentioned. It's kind of a two-part procurement. Um, the second part is an upgrade with uh, the latest in video detection technology to actually so rather than RF signals kind of flying around all over the place, or perhaps you know solely relying on loop detectors in the pavement, it uses cameras to visualize buses and pedestrians at the intersection to add on to that technology. That's also a sole source because that vendor is in an, an exclusive strategic partnership with our um, TSP vendor, uh, this this uh, this engine. So those two are. are, are It's, it's not a follow, um, but sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll just be sitting usually by myself thinking it's dangerous. Procurement sort of, not CETA procurement, but the, the rules and regulations that we live under really at some point need to be changed. Uh, I get it here, you know, we don't want to be awarding, these are big contracts, we want to be awarding contracts to whoever we decide. But in a lot of these cases, there really is no decision to be made, as Chris said. The second one, for example, we have no yeah, choice. The They're a partner. Mm -hmm. So if we want to do the upgrade, we have to, we have to go with the partner. So it, 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 I'm, I'm sure, I know that public authorities across the state struggle with these kinds of things, too. So. And so, correct me if I'm wrong, but as part of that grant application, we had to put in all these fees and amounts. Oh, yeah. As part of the package, oh, yeah. so it was already approved on that level. Oh, yeah. It was, and, and we're in constant contact with the FTA in general. They know that we're about to go yeah. to the board for this, for this money, for this upgrade technology. <clears throat> Great, good for you. <laughs> got well, I think to you know, jump ahead a little, the, you know, the award that I, I talked to, <clears> the email, the electric infrastructure bus award, $25 million. There are project partners named in that grant, yeah. and, and that's a competitive grant. And it makes your grant all that much more attractive when you can bring to them a list of partners that are ready, willing, and able mm -hmm. to, to, to work with you to develop, in this case, the infrastructure part of the project. So it, you're already in the grant application telling the feds and the state, this is who we're going to do business with. So you're going to have sole source awards for a long time. I hope we do a good enough job explaining what it is, why we're doing it, and then you know, the justification for the sole source. If we're not, yeah, please, that was a question. please ask. No, 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 but please ask. Because this stuff gets complicated. But we need the technology. We sure do. Well, I mean, everybody thinks that a lot of our scheduling and stuff, you know, all the behind the scenes things are all people, and they are. We have good people. So much of this now sits on software. I was just down in control or something. It's amazing just looking around how automated the system really is. Long way to go. Way to go. Anything else from anybody? If not, then I'll call the question. All those in favor of uh, Resolution 33 say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay, our next item is the contract uh, for traffic management services. And obviously, as Chris said, it is related to the video detection part of our traffic management system. Um, and uh, the upgrade provides detection for vehicle and passenger counts and cloud based data analytics. Our vendor GTT has entered an exclusive strategic partnership with MyoVision for the equipment. The system is fully integrated with our TSP platform and therefore excludes other vendor participation. <coughs> Staff did review the pricing and found it to be fair and reasonable. Uh, so we need a motion to approve a three-year sole source contract with two one-year extensions to MyoVision Technologies of 
Kitchener, Ontario, for an amount not to exceed $1,151,664. So moved. Second. Second. Mike? Any uh, follow up from Chris's explanation? All those in favor, then say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution approved. <coughs> Okay, and finally, our last uh, action item is approval of the contract for Gateway Mobility Hub, uh, for Gateway to Mobility Hub. After many discussions about building the Mobility Hub in Schenectady, we are ready to award a, con a construction contract to begin the work. Uh, and an invitation for bids was issued and four bids were received. Staff reviewed bids and recommends awarding a contract to the low bidder, Carver Construction. So we need a motion to award a contract to Carver Construction Incorporated Cleanings for an amount not to exceed $4,011,330. This is the big one. Um, what is it? Okay. I'll make that motion. Thank you, Dean. Second. Second. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, before we start, I'm going to abstain on the vote on this since uh, Metroplex is a property owner involved with the project along with the city and County, uh, you know, benefits the community greatly. Uh, it certainly doesn't benefit me, but if we're recusing ourselves from benefiting the community, we can just wouldn't be voting for things. So <laughs> that's what we're here for. But in any event, I will abstain if there's other comments, questions about the project. This has been a long time coming. Yeah. Uh, I think you know the background to this. Um, it is an outstanding location. It will be a uh, signature project without doubt. Um, and in all transparency, we have had unbelievable cooperation with the city of Schenectady, the county of Schenectady, and our partners at Metroplex. Uh, it doesn't happen without that partnership. Um, because in the background, you know, the building was purchased, I think, Grand Rapids Station, the old Grand Rapids Station was purchased, demolished, um, and basically the site was left ready for us to build a mobility hub. Um, this is really going to be an upgrade. In a location that is, um, if you haven't been there, you really need to take a ride. It is a hot spot with development all around it, new development, existing development. <coughs> and we're going to fit right in. I think we're going to help, gonna help develop it. And we're putting money again towards public works, you know, improving the streetscape, lights, signalization. We're even going to make the sidewalks wider so that you know, people can get through and move more efficiently. Any other questions, comments? This will also have like restrooms for the bus operator. And hopefully a first step towards a more permanent um, solution where we can do those things. Yeah. Because, um, it is a need. It's a, it's a complaint that comes to us. It's a complaint that comes to the union. There are not enough places for people out there just to take a break. Yeah. This will accommodate people with disabilities, this will accommodate bikes, this will accommodate uh, car share. Um, basically, uh, this is a one-stop shop without building you know, multi-million dollar transit center. This is a very small space. So we have, you know, Chris and staff has got a couple of locations in the region that we're looking to you know, develop for that, that level. So hopefully we can bring another one to you.
very familiar with the case number two better. I'll just work through the question a couple of more. Really healthy set of bids and underworld. Got anything else? All those in favor of Resolution 35 say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll abstain. Resolution is approved. Okay. Yes. Um, the next two items are administrative discussion items. The first is the monthly management report, financial management report. Mike Collins provided that report. Uh, our MRT is 37% over budget for the year so far. Customer affairs are 15% over budget. And the rental real station is 36% over budget. Um, wages are 4.5% under budget for the year, mostly due to manpower challenges and uh, Montgomery SERP is not uh, starting until this week. Uh, workers' compensation is under budget by 54% due to less severe claims. Uh, we are in a good financial position and will make a budget adjustment in September to adjust for changes in state operating system. So unless you have any questions for Mike, Questions? Uh, I'll move on to the non-financial report, which was provided by Chris Stephanie. Um, fixed route ridership is up 14% for the month, and which obviously is reflected in the customer revenue. Um, and 20% uh, uh, for the year. Start ridership is up 11% for the month and 18% for the year. Fixed route on-time performance is at 74%, and star on-time performance is at 78%. This trips continue to be high due to manpower. Uh, we do expect this to continue for some time. And if you have any questions for Chris, <coughs> non-financial report. Nope. Okay, then that concludes my report, and our next scheduled meeting is September 21st here at 110 Water Relief. Very good. Thank you, Denise. We'll move on to the Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee. Jack, tell us Thank you. Uh, Community and Stakeholder Relations Committee met on Thursday, August 25th. Uh, there were two administrative discussion items. Uh, the first was the advocacy item that we have on the regular um, agenda. CARM discussed our continued efforts in ensuring customers and operators are safe on buses. The mask mandate is still in place on the buses, um, so it's straining relationships. I don't know if you have an update from all that stuff that happened last month. Uh, more, more, more work on this. Um, our local delegation, um, oh, um, got paid a job now, um, have a sign-on letter uh, that we're pushing on the assembly. Um, the governor, I think in two weeks, is due to you know, re-up the emergency power, so if any change happens, will happen there. Uh, our fellow uh, systems across the state, uh, especially in Rochester, are, are lobbying very hard uh, for this change. Just to, as you recall, um, you don't need a mask to ride an Amtrak train. You don't need a mask to ride on a school bus. You don't need a mask uh, to fly. Um, on the surface, you say, well, what's the big deal? Who cares? Um, it's just almost a continual it's sort of like, you know, when you have a sore arm, just, just constant issues for bus drivers. You know, it's just constant. Um, why do I have to wear a mask? Why doesn't that person have a mask on? You know, and on and on and on. Uh, some of those have turned um, nasty, uh, if not violent. Um, and, you know, when I walk the walk around and talk to operators, you know, I've been doing this long enough, so I know not to say it's a toward the end. That would get me just want to know when the relief has come. That's all I want. So at least I feel I feel better that at least in the last couple <coughs> weeks we've actually been working on something. But uh, they're frustrated. And I, and I don't want to see that. You know, next week is not going to be pretty. When schools come back in, you know, you pull up, and I'm not picking on any school, but you pull up to Albany High and 100 10th graders race out with no masks on. You know, what do you this is in our material that we sent to the governor. We spoke to our staff about it. We expect the driver to get your mask on before I get on. That's the path. Yeah, 
So that's where we are. It keeps me busy. I was happy to see this after our meeting last week with Mr. Yeah. Flutter. So yeah, actually, yeah. At least it, it, I felt well. They cornered me on a, a different event. We're talking about something else. And oh, by the way, yeah, they're 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 friends of trans. Friends. All right. Uh, the second administrative discussion item uh, is the month the monthly uh, media relations community engagement report from Jamie Caslow. CDTA earned 25 media placements in television, newspaper, and radio since July. The story is focused on our expansion into Montgomery County, college students returning to the region, electric buses, and the expansion of universal access with new partners such as the downtown Albany Bit. Uh, community engagement activities and events for the month uh, included the Schenectady Early Election Trolley Service, a championship trolley to the airport for the Albany patrons, and Amtrak transportation during the Central Warehouse issue, which I'm sure everyone is well aware of. Um, Jamie also outlined upcoming events, which include the 20th anniversary celebration at the Rensselaer, Rensselaer Rail Station and the annual CDTA Think Box Bowl for the Real Death Marketing Campaign, the American Cancer Society and the Capital Region of the United States also here. Um, unless anyone has any questions for me, the next meeting of the committee is scheduled for Thursday, September 22nd at 11.15 a.m. at 110 Waterloo um, or on Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Jackie. Um, strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Mike, anything? For yes. Uh, anything to did, say? We did not meet. Uh, however, our next meeting will be Thursday, September 22nd, uh, 12 p.m. here at 110 via Microsoft Teams. So I'm sure we'll have a full agenda next month. All right. Payback. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. We'll move on to the CEO report. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, I believe the, the uh, report is in your packet, um, and it's great to now say we are a five-county uh, transportation board. We added the fifth county, Montgomery County, and you were probably tired of the reports every month about you know, this movement, which was slow at times, but it all came together, um, and service began um, early Sunday morning. Base uh, needs in downtown Amsterdam and moves out from there. Um, brand new buses, we were just taking a look, we just taking a look at the number of new gillets, so we have brand new, I mean, literally brand new buses uh, out there. We had a media event, um, lots of our friends and partners, I mean, lots of people feel, feel excited. It's a different level of excitement than we're used to. Usually we do something and hey, thanks, CDK. This is like over the top uh, excitement. I'm going to send you some, uh, some of the coverage, but uh, lots of local news coverage. Oh, unbelievable local coverage, and they can continue. Emily DeVito is not here because she's out doing a ride along on Channel 10 with another store. Mm -hmm. But we're going to send you something from Spectrum that we couldn't write it better ourselves. It's a two and a half minute piece. It's a commercial. What's the you know, young couple first day with their young child? Yeah, we own a car. We don't have two. High price of gas. We're going to Schenectady to visit uh, his dad. You know, the whole story of all that. Yeah, it's incredible. Listen, I wanted to thank the board for uh, in the beginning. We set a vision. We said, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." Here is what we need to have happen. It was really you know, state operating assistance has to be at this level because we, we can't mortgage the rest of the system uh, to, 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 to prop up. Stay true to that um, to the point where, you know, on a percentage basis, there's more state operating assistance coming in from Montgomery County than anything we do, and frankly, probably anything across the state. Uh, everyone knows it, uh, but that's the way we constructed it based on the board's vision, directive, and, and just stay the course we did. And honestly, there were times when I was pretty close to frustrated. Well, let's close this up. I, I just don't know exactly. But kudos to the staff here, and kudos to Lisa Murrell, uh, who behind the scenes said, no, 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 I think we can get this done. And we did. And we had lots of supporters, you know, uh, the Assembly and Senate who pushed us over the finish line. So you can know, rest assured that financially, at least, you know, we didn't pay cost. Financially, the, the, you know, this is a really good show. People are using it. Um, you know, every day we'll see a few more. 
Express service, which is really a, kind of a combination of what we did to Exit 26 and what um, a private carrier did in Exit 27. We kind of merged that all together, but that fits in really nicely. Staff continues to do the meets and greets, meet and greets uh, in the community. But I mean, the level of excitement. They haven't had anything like what we're talking about for about eight years. There's been no mobility in a, in a city that, you know, needs some help. You know, where we had the media event was on, on Main Street. And that is a DEI. Uh, there's a $10 million DEI. And I just kind of looked around. Well, wait a second. This doesn't make any sense. There's no way to get people. Uh, so I, I, I think over time we'll, we will be just like we want to be. Um, even I know the first day there was, a, there was at least one reservation. <laughs> and that will come soon. Yeah. Yeah. Be careful with the worst one. Yeah. 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 Well, you know some of the people that I'm referring to. Yeah, the first ride. You had little ones on the Yeah, we had little, little, little <laughs> people as first riders. Uh, you know, Congressman Taco was there. And, uh, his, his staff. And, uh, they ran away. Other people who are associated with this. I made friends with one of the bakery people, but I think we bought them out. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's at the, at the same token, we continue to work with our friends in Glens Falls. Um, it's, that's a little different. This will be a merger of, of an existing system that does quite nicely. Um, it, it will be Warren County with, a, with an association from Washington. That comes with funding um, already built in, uh, as we've talked. Uh, the people part of it is going to be the challenge. It's a small group of people from a small town, 20, a couple dozen, uh, that is aging. But we want to make sure we don't lose them. Um, the issue is their compensation and benefit packages and the union that they belong to is different than ours. All three of those are different. So how do we bring that in and, and sort of transition? So more to follow. Is there a time frame on that? Do you think? Yeah, there's a time frame. The uh, the general manager is going to retire from Hecker High Water this time next year. Yeah. So if it doesn't happen by then, you know, it's almost like a restart. So that's sort of the, the target. Uh, and what we'd like to do, obviously, is retain his services so that you know we can basically be operating the dam. Uh, very doable. Nothing here that's, that's problematic, but Mike and Chris and others are working on how do you merge the people in? They don't lose anything, but we, we don't want them to. Right. We just can't afford it. And you don't want to create disparities. Exactly. So that there's lots of little balls, not big balls, but little balls. So, it's ironic to me that we're introducing new services and talking about new service areas when we are in the struggle of my career with headcounts. Um, no one has ever seen this. Um, and we continue to, at every level of the company, basically people are working their tail off to, 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 to get this done. I don't use the word solve it because I don't think we're going to solve this problem anytime soon. This is with us for a while. Um, in the last couple of months, we've hired 30 new bus operators that run through training programs. Um, and there's a class of, I don't know, 20 or so starting day after Labor Day. Um, you would think, if it, listen, normally, four years ago, five years ago, we were thinking, wow, we're bulging with people. <clears throat> I haven't seen a report this month that we've probably lost just as many people. Uh, it's this revolving door, it's a churn, and that's what the struggle really is. Um, Kelly and her staff are finding people. It's incredibly difficult, but they are finding people. They're populating classes. The bigger problem is retention. And we, we've been talking with the union. We, we have to come up with new solutions. The old solutions don't work. Um, and people's motivation, what, what is the prize for them, is different than it was just a short time ago. Um, so I can tell you, I can pledge you, it won't be because of the lack of effort. Um, but it's not going away anytime soon. And most of you are dealing with this uh, in your own businesses. So it is what it is.
is what it is. Um, we started Montgomery County. We had 15, 15, 16 people in the bitter ones. The, the gap just got bigger. So, on the flip side, we thought the summer with you know, COVID and infections, things would come down, it was looking outside, you know, word pretty much would spread. Well, the new variants don't work that way. Um, as some of you know, for some, uh, in July and August, nearly 40 employees tested positive uh, for the virus. Um, so there's a minimum requirement, requirement now that you're out five days. Um, so we have the, we had the short of help, and we had Virus, so they're all gone for at least a minimum of five days. So it just makes it just COVID needs to go away to at least help us keep our eye on the prize, right? It's, it's a diversion, it's a constant diversion, not a big diversion, just enough to throw everything askew. Um, so you're going to see high trip cuts, in, uh, especially in August. July wasn't as bad. Um, this this month I think will be okay. We do pick runs, as you know, the operator pick runs. We schedule a little shading here and there. Uh, it, it's better, um, but you're still speaking to still see uh, high numbers of trip cuts. Uh, the mobility, the new mobility things continue to be you know ramp slams, especially cycle. Um, I just saw a note from Lindsey Brandt. We're at forty three thousand, which is with, ahead of last year, with four weeks less of operation. So uh, we continue to do good things there. Uh, seasonal services are all wrapping up. You know, craft and car, nature bus, uh, Austin Plate, uh, and on and on and on. And then millions of special events. Uh, I exaggerate to a million. And all of these special event things get coordinated when, with the lack of help. So we, we, we're staying relevant in the community getting special things done. And, and you know, the operating men and women, I, I don't know how they do it. I have no idea how they do it. They, they, they pull this off somehow, some way, piece it together. Uh, they beg, borrow, and steal. Uh, and they get it done. They are amazing. Um, some back room stuff going on at IPTA uh, regarding, you know, the. Uh, Association management. Maybe going to, we're going to a change there. Uh, that hasn't changed in my career. The same association manager. So, you know, for, for those of you that do this, business, everyone thinks it's you know all the people who speak at meetings. You know, they're the big officers and the ones who run the association. But in reality, there's a lot of association management in the city. I'm a little leery. First change in 35, 40 years. It, it, there's just no way of it. Hopefully we can get through our October conference in the next couple of months. We have, we have a firm ready to, to go and take it. In the grant management area, I've, I've tried to keep you in tune with what's going on. $25 million competitive grant. Uh, you know, on some staffs, this would be you know reason for a big party here. It's kind of ho-hum. Um, our staff really understands how to put together these grants at the federal level, and I can tell you the federal uh, officials that we deal with at regional government and headquarters at FDA are very familiar with us and very, um, they want to work with us, and they, they, they know it's not a stretch to do this, and we're not going to mess up the grant or mess up uh, the grant management and technique. So the new news, and I sent this to you yesterday, is every three years they come in and basically audit everything. 24 functional areas that they look at. Um, it's been the same 24 functional areas for probably 24 years. But um, usually we get a ding or two, and it's not troubling. You could do this better. You, you, know, you didn't have this documentation in place. They found these here in all 24 functional areas. It's called clean audit. Um, hats off to, I mean, I think everybody in this room has some piece of it. Melissa Shanley, who you probably don't know, she doesn't come to these meetings, but this is her job. Her job is the relationship with the FDA, making sure it's clean. And it was obvious to me that that relationship carried it. They were, you know, 
very comfortable with her. And sang her. They sang her praises to the point where I grabbed her afterwards and said, you're not leaving, are you? Wow. She's known her home. I'm really happy. Um, but uh, very unusual to have no fine lines. Very good to have no fine lines. But uh, that easy work, but uh, we got it done. And I think, I think that's pretty much it. We've got a lot of balls in the air. Ridership thing, please mention ridership is over 80% of what we were before the pandemic. Very unusual for across the country for yeah. a bus only system. And it's it's universal access. So I was just coming back from a doctor's appointment to the kids over St. Peter's, so I cut across town. And, you know, I'd get to see New Scotland Avenue to Washington, Western Avenue to Washington. And, you know, tons of you know, SUNY New Orleans kids, St. Rose kids. That's really the secret behind the scenes. Well, we've got a bunch of new ones, John. We're working on a bunch of new ones. This, the one downtown bid uh, is a game changer for us because it's an umbrella agreement, so all the bid members are eligible and not all the way up to John. 100? 150. 150 in two weeks. So 150 people. Two weeks. Have a bid process. It starts tomorrow. Yeah, it starts tomorrow, right? So, wow. That's great. So, all good stuff. Anybody who wants to drive a bus or fix a bus, we'll talk. Thank you, Connor. Uh, we're in the section of board member comments. Anything for the good order, order of the good or the order or whatever? No, just that uh, I guess I should just report that I was at the transit board members meeting in Salt Lake City um, at the beginning of August. And, um, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity if you are a board member to go to these seminars because you do get to meet board members from other uh, properties as well as getting to visit their systems, you know. So we had some some nice, um, uh, you know, uh, they created some, some opportunities for us to go see their through the RT line, they're building, um, you know, some transit-oriented development and, and other things. And I just think it's a, a great opportunity. It's every July. Um, so it's horrible time of year, but anyway, it's, it's at the end of July usually every year, and I don't know where it's going to be next year, um, but um, but it is a good opportunity, I think, for board members to, to do that, and it's just board members that go, so um, so it really gives you that chance to see how other boards are structured. Um, you know, we've got some unique boards out there, Utah in, in particular, they have a three trustees of the board, and they're paid members. It's a totally different structure, um, you know, but uh, but it, it's just a good chance, I, mean, I think, to get more involved in Outkit as well. Beautiful city, too. Yeah, yeah. It was hotter than whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hot. Yeah, it's 102, not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting a little closer to home. No air conditioning, so it's a little bit room. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Anything else? Uh, our next meeting will be on Wednesday, <clears throat> September 28th at noon, right here at 110 Waterloo Avenue. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. No Second. Thank you, Mike. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. 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 See you, Pete. Bye, Peter. Peter. <laughs>